Hi guys, welcome back. Um, I just had a message uh, from one of the subscribers called Chloe and um, I think I've answered this already before in the past but I'll try and help you um, maybe get some more information about it and it's about how you know the ambulance service works with the University of Cumbria whilst you're on your student's uh, paramedic course. And please excuse my surroundings, I had a bit of a low mood today so I got myself into the my music room and just tried to jam out a little bit with the um, the guitar and uh, and the drums but um, yeah so we're here at the moment um, yeah so in a nutshell I think when you start you're an ECA for example okay you go on to then after your two or three years whatever your minor your whatever your minimal time is for the ambulance service then you're then um, allowed to start the apprenticeship with the University of Cumbria. Um, I don't know what it's like with other universities, all I know is with this one, okay? Um, and then what happens is that the HR department of the, the ambulance service will then be in communication with um, the University of Cumbria, so they allow you then go and do your full-time work as uh, an ECA slash you know student paramedic at that time then and then take your time then to then do the um, university work so for example you could do a three or four days in the week as a student paramedic and do your 12 hour shifts or three or a, a 10 hour shifts or whatever it's going to be and then the following week after a break you might have your two or three days at uni see and depends on where the how far you need to go you have to think about the travel and accommodation if it's overnight you know if it's like two or three days on the trot so these are all lots of things you need to talk about and think about um, but I think from what I remember it's on the onus of yourself to make sure that um, you have the ability to get to university um, and uh, book those accommodations and also to be able to come back on time for your next shift um, if you're on because you'll be on relief at that time anyway as well because you can't be on a, um, a rotor um, because of the nature of, of, of the um, apprenticeship um, but you would need to um, have a look at your rotor and if you find that there was a mistake made for example you know you have a late night the night beforehand to then travel up the next morning to get and go to university you'll need to be able to then um, organize I believe your time um, maybe ask for a shift swap or something but the university and the ambulance service do really hard um, in, in, in trying to get the right times for you um, and to be able to, for you to travel between the two places and also have your time at home and, and, and relax as well and, and sleep because obviously that's really important. Um, so on top of all that, then you've also got to do university work at home. So not only do you go to university, um, whether it be on campus, so say for example St Leonard's or Bristol or um, um, Plymouth or wherever you know they, they send you or where you can go, but when you come home, they're expecting you also to do your assignments and your um, your homework as well, because that's that's ongoing all the time. So when you have a rest day, that's really your time when you're going to be putting pen to paper or you know start typing up on your computer. So it's not really a lot of time for yourself, but you need to have that time. You really do need to have a complete break time. So then your brain's rested as well as your body as well because you can burn out if you're not careful um, so when I went in to do this I being the way I am I, I, I got my calendar or my, my diary or you know for the, for the month and I found out all the times I'm supposed to be at university then I found out the times I'm supposed to be at work and then I found out the times where I could rest and when I could then do my studies and it's not easy. Um, I mean, okay, I've been away for it for a year now. Um, I'm hoping to come back as soon as possible, um, if HR allows me to and when they allow me to, because at the moment I'm still having, you know, breathing issues um, when I'm exerting. But um, talking to my colleagues on the course of my old old co cohort, which I can't go back to now, because obviously they're, they're like a year ahead now, 
um, they're finding it very hard. They're finding it very challenging to um, find times to relax, to find times to study and to do university and to work at the same time. And, you know, if you're like me, you've got kids as well or a husband and, you know, that's all part of the mix as well. But it's not to say it's not possible. OK, the university and the ambulance service are there to help you. And if you've got any qu any queries at all, any worries, any troubles, anything that comes up that is, um, you know, a, a problem, if your mood has lowered dramatically because of it as well, let people know. You must communicate all your worries because if you don't, then they won't know and you'll get yourself into a real tears. All right. So I hope, Clary, if that's answered your question, I don't know if it has. Um, like I said, I think I've actually mentioned this before um, when I first started in the university. Um, so I hope look back on the last videos quite well back again now, I suppose it is, um, and see if that um, helps you at all. But yeah, I'm here if you need any help. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, hopefully we'll see you on the road as soon as possible. So take care, drive safe and uh, be well. Bye-bye for now.